All right. We are the Hebrew Israelites. We come out week in, week out to prophesy the downfall of this wicked and sinful kingdom known as America. One of the scriptures is known as Babylon, spiritual Sodom, spiritual Egypt. We are also out here to tell our people, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, your true biblical identity. You are the Israelites according to the Bible, all right? And we are here to tell you to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand because the Lord is about to bring great evils upon the planet Earth. And if you do not repent and turn back onto the Lord, if you do not repent of your sins and your transgressions and your lifestyles and your way of thinking, the way you're living, you will be caught up in the great evils and the great perils that's about to come on the planet Earth. All right? But first, we have to break down the strongholds and the lies that's been taught to our people. Because through the way of the Christian church and the Roman Catholic church and the Protestant church and the Seventh-day Adventist church and the Methodist and the Baptist and the Jehovah Witness, Orthodox, unorthodox, you have been lied to, all right? You have been lied to about the image of who the world eagerly calls Jesus the Christ. You have been lied to about who the true chosen people of God is. You have been lied to about what pertains to salvation. All right? And we are out here to tell you the truth. What's truth with his lies according to the Bible? All right? So let's get it. Um, I got Isaiah 25 and 7. And he will destroy this mountain. The faith. Can I, can I read that again? Hold on. All right. This is Isaiah 25 and 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. So he's going to destroy that covering cast that's over all people. What is that covering cast that's over all people? The lies that the colonizers, your conquerors, the devil that the Bible speaks of, the Caucasian race. With your biblical identity is Esau Edom. You are the Edomites according to the Bible. And the Bible calls you the wicked. It calls you the wicked. Because you are the wicked people on the planet Earth. There's no race of people on the planet Earth that has done more wickedness, more crimes against humanity, more bloodshed, more raping and robbing than the Caucasian race. The covering caste that's over all people is the identities that you've been lied and you call yourselves. You call yourself African American. You call yourself Hispanic. You call yourself Latino. You call yourself Mexicano. You call yourself Colombian. You call yourself Puerto Rican. And these are all names that your conquerors and your colonizers gave you. You was not calling yourself Puerto Rican, Colombian, Cuban, Mexican, African American, Haitian, West Indian. You was not calling yourselves your names prior to the colonizers coming and giving you your names, enslaving you, beating your language out of you, beating your identity out of you, beating your culture out of you, and beating your names out of you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jeremiah 17 and 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy inheritance. So the Lord prophesied that you would discontinue from your heritage. You wouldn't know who you were, according to the Bible. You wouldn't know your culture, according to the Bible. You don't even consider 
that you are the people of the Bible. You don't even consider that the Heavenly Father is your God. So the Lord discontinued you from your heritage. Go ahead. All right. And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not. You serve your enemies in the land you know this knowest not. Have you heard of the transatlantic slave trade? Have you heard of the Sahara slave trade? Have you heard about the indigenous people being shipped to Spain, to uh, Britain, to Europe? Have you heard of indigenous people being put on cargo slave ships and shipped to Spain and Europe? Have you heard of you so-called African Americans being uh, 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 put on slave ships like sardines and sent to the Central Americas? So our people were scattered throughout the four corners of the planet Earth by the way of slavery. Got All right. And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. So we was put in slavery in the lands that we didn't know of. Okay. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger which shall burn forever. There you go. That is the cause. That is the reasoning why we was put in slavery. And that is the reason why we go through what we go through on a daily basis. Because we kindled a fire in the Lord. We piss God off. So because you piss God off, you are in the impoverished conditions that you're in. You suffer from the diseases that you suffer from today. You are in the ghettos and the slums because you piss God off today. You are mass incarcerated because you piss God off today. Your babies are getting gunned down in the streets because you piss God off today. Uh, it says, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there is come a falling away first. So the day of the Lord is not going to come until we fell as a people. Because you had people back then that was lying, saying that the day of the Lord happened already. They was telling the believers or the followers of the Messiah that the day of the Lord happened already, which was a lie. The day of the Lord is going to happen until certain prophecies come to pass. Okay? And that falling away was 70 AD when Rome besieged Jerusalem. Okay? Since that man of sin be revealed. And that man of sin, one of the many titles of the Caucasian race, the people of sin, because you are adverse to the heavenly father and his son and his ways. Look at America. That is a key example to show that this place is polar opposite to the way God intended the world to be. You think the way America goes and runs is normal. And this shit ain't normal. There's nothing normal about the way the society is ran and governed. It's pure wickedness, man. Okay. It says, who, it says, the son of perdition, who, ex, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called Most High, or that, or that is worshipped. Beautiful. That's the beautiful 
scripture because it, it 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 gives you the key clues of who the son of perdition is, who the son of sin is, the uh, the sinful one is. He exalts himself above everything that the Most High said is good. He exalts himself above the Most High himself. What other race of people has done that? What other race of people depicted themselves to be God, the Son of God, and the people of God? No other race of people has done that but the Caucasian race. Uh, it says, it says, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, Showing himself that he is God. Read that one more time. It says uh Second Thessalonians 2 and 4. No, he is God part. Okay, so so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He as God poses himself to be like God. One more time, I it says it says, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself to be a God. What other race of people did that? What other race of people depicted themselves as God? What other people is sitting in the land of God, of God's people? What people are in the land of God today? See, this will answer your question of who the wicked is. This ain't our words. This is the words coming straight from the Bible that your pastor seems to skip over. These are coming straight from the Bible that your reverend and your rabbis and your pastors skip over. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I got two verses. Isaiah 14... In verse 13 to 14, Isaiah 14 and 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'll break it down. All right. That, that's a, the so-called white man. He said he will, um, he will um, ascend into heaven. And he, and he, and he went in out of space. All right, he went into outer space and put his space stations up. He put his satellites up. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. That's the so-called white man. He's trying to be like the Most High. Numbering all the people. He want to chip all the people. So he didn't know every living soul that's on the planet. All right? If that's not trying to be the most high, then what is? That's right. He put his image up as being the Lord, the Lord's people here in the, in the Holy Land. All right? He got, he got the world in, in, in slavery. He got his foot on a, a nation of Israel's neck, which is the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. He saw he talking about he gonna go to this galaxy, that galaxy. This is this is who this is this scripture is describing him. The so-called white man. Revelation chapter one, verse one. Revelation of the house shot. So too when you wake up into white. Which the most high gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So this is the revealing, right? Revelations need to reveal. What is being revealed? The visions of the Lord. The, the, and not only the visions of the Lord, but the image of the Lord. Once again, another lie and misconception that your pastors, your reverence, and your rabbis teach you. They constantly lie to you in your church services, man. Saying that we don't know the image of the Lord. Or God has no color. 
the Son of God has no color. Color doesn't matter. Only thing that matters is the message. So if color doesn't matter, why did you, when you Google the why when you Google the word Jesus, a depiction of an anorexic Caucasian man that looks like a heroin addict pops up on your screen. He looks like a hippie heroin addict, anorexic Caucasian man, and he looks zesty. All right, but this is the revealing of the Lord's message, the revealing of the Lord's visions, which are the prophecies. Okay. And he said, and signified it by his angel and unto his servant John. Yeah. And he signified it by his prophet. Why? Because the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven was given unto the prophets. Surely the Lord God doeth nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So the prophets get the heads up first. And then after his prophets get the word, then the rest of the elect get it. The rest of the congregation gets it. But first dibs goes to his first fruits, or his men, or his friends, or his prophets. Okay? Revelation 1 and 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with the garment down to the foot, girt about the past, the golden girdle. So just like how you see us got long garments down to the foot, not t-shirt garments, not jacket garments, not hooded garments, garments down to the foot. All right? Because that's the ancient apparel of a Hebrew Israelite. All right? They wore garments that covered their neck on down. Yeah, do that one more time. It says, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one light unto the Son of Man, clothed with the garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with the golden girdle. So the Lord had a warlike belt. Why? Because the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 3, it says the Heavenly Father is a man of war. So if the Heavenly Father is a man of war, what will his son be? The scriptures say, train up in a child in the way he shall learn. So Yahweh Shah, who the word actually called Jesus Christ, came to do the Father's will. So if the Heavenly Father is the man of war, the Son of God is a man of war as well. Look at another example, David. David was a man after the Most High's heart. And David was a man of war. Scriptures say that Saul kills his thousands, David kills his tens of thousands. So a man that's after the most high heart was a man of war. So the son of God is like a man of war, man. Go ahead. It says, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. So the head on his hairs, the complexion was white. Right? Which symbolizes purity. Which symbolizes righteousness. Which symbolizes wisdom. But the texture, the texture of his hair was wool. What race of people on the planet Earth has woolly hair? There you go. The Negroid. Alright? so-called African Americans, so-called West Indians, so-called Haitians, has woolly hair. So this is one clue to show you what nationality the Lord came from or what people he would look like today. Go ahead. It says, his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes was as a flame of fire which was a prophecy that the Lord would be a wine bibber, right? And also the Lord is going to come back with anger and fury, right? 
Go ahead. It says, it's, uh, uh, and it's beat like unto fine brass, as if they burned in the furnace. What is the color of brass? Brass is a derivative of brown. So not only it said it was a derivative of brown, but it was a derivative of brown that was burnt in the furnace. Why would it give you a description of the color of his feet? And if your feet is one color, what's the rest of your body? So if his feet was dark skin, the rest of his body was dark skin. So who the world ignorantly calls Jesus the Christ was a dark skinned black man. Uh -huh. And his feet like unto fine grass, as if they burned in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And the voice of the Lord was the sound of many waters. Because when he spoke to people, he spoke to hundreds and thousands of people at a time. God gave the description of the Lord of an Englishman with a British accent talking, talking all soft like a, you know what, predator. That's the image that you give of the Lord. Like he's some soft smoking, soft smoking, hippie, heroin addict, <laughs> anorexic predator preying on children. But the scriptures say that the voice of the Lord was the sound of many waters. Go next to a river. You can't hardly hear. Go next to a river and try to talk to somebody next to you. You have to shout to talk to somebody next to you when you're next to a river, man. Because the river is so loud and powerful and the force. Like, what if you ever be in a, in a location out in a rural area and you hear the, the violent thunders? You know what I mean? You can, you can feel it. Like, yeah. that, that, that's like how the most high and the Lord speak. All right. Right? That's right. It's like violently, like, because it, 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 uh, the, the most high is the, most of, high, the highest authority in your house shop. You know? Henry chapter 10, verse 5. It says, then I lifted up my eyes, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girt up, girded with fine gold of Ephaz. Okay. His body also was like the barrel. Mm -hmm. And the, his the body of his garment. The garment that he owned had, it was a green color. It wasn't talking about his physical skin like, complexion. He said making jokes yeah. like hard at work. Because yeah. the, the heavenly father ain't even having his butt ass naked. Okay. It says, and his face has the appearance of light, lightning. Yeah, because get that Ecclesiastes 8 1. Was that face to shine? Yeah, yeah. Right. Really? Well, we get it first. Okay. Ecclesiastes 8 1. Yeah. It says, who is as the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. Go back to Daniel. Right. It says, and his face as the appearance of lightning. His face is like unto the appearance of lightning. Because <laughs> the most high's wisdom is infinite. All right? The scriptures say how unsearchable are the wisdom of the most high. It's infinite. There's no number. You can't even fathom. Because the most high is out of space, time, and matter. You can't fathom that. As we were saying last, stay in your lane, mortals. <laughs> stay in your lane. That is above your mortal pay grade. Yeah. Don't, get, don't get stuck. You go mad, man. Trying right. to figure out the most high, man. Stay, stay in the mortal's place. That's man. right. Right, it says, whose loins 
Dave 10, verse 6. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and feet like the color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. How you polish brass with fire? That is another description as burnt in the oven. Alright? Brass is a derivative of brown. So one scripture gave you a description of his feet. Another scripture gave you a description of his arms and his feet. The complexion of one part of the body is like the rest of the part of the body of, of the rest of the body. So we learn through the scriptures and through thy precepts, we get understanding that the Lord was a dark skinned man. So once again, why in the hell do you have an image? Of God, like this, man. Why does this image exist, right? Because this is the, the this is the uh, this is the image that comes to people's mind when they see the Heavenly Father. This is the image that comes to mind when you see the people of the Heavenly Father. You don't think of God no other way, but as a Caucasian. You don't think the Son of God of any other complexion but Caucasian. But when we give you the truth according to the Bible, now color doesn't matter. It don't matter what Jesus looks like. It don't matter what God looks like. But obviously it does matter because the description is in the Bible. Saying that color doesn't matter or what God and Jesus doesn't... Uh, Oh, so-called God and so-called Jesus look like doesn't matter, you saying that the words of the Lord don't matter. And, and, and Esau society, and in, in, in Esau society, nationality and so-called color does matter. Because they, they always asking you to um um what's your nationality? You know? What's your nationality? And Esau society he, he goes on on, on so-called nationality and color, and skin tone. He, he, he set that up. Because all the other nations in the ancient world, no one went, went by that, by so-called nationality and skin color. He saw sort of brought that out like that. And he has that when you fill out for jobs, which is right. uh, uh, apartments and shit like that. What's your, your nationality, right? You know what I mean? That's a social construct. Yeah. White, black, and yellow. That's a social construct that your oppressors came up with to keep you divi uh, divided. Yeah. Because um, even in, the, in, the, in the ancient Rome, you know, you had Jake coming up in the Roman Empire. They was low. Apostle Tahar mentioned it uh, after camp, you know? And it's showing a show called Domino, right? It's called Domino. It's about the Roman Empire. It's a few seasons, right? It's, it's, it's about... Um, it's starting from Julius Caesar to um to um Augustus. Tiberius is there, but he ain't in the rulership yet. Um, you know, and it's showing that Jake, it was rich Jake's, wealthy Jake's trying to get in the Senate. They had money, but they wanted that that stature of being in the Senate. The further they sit, showing like yo, you know what I mean? And it they go, it didn't go by skin color back then. It was just what class you was in. There you go. Sorry, I just okay. You good, King? Yeah, nah, nah. All right. Acts 7, verse 48. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not, and temples made with hands. Go above that. Right. It says, uh. Acts 7, verse 46. Who found favor before the Most High and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob? But Solomon built in the house. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not the temples made for hands. Once again, another misconception that your pastors, your reverends, and your rabbis don't teach you. Right? Your holy people make you think that you have to appear in a building to worship your power or your God. 
when the Messiah was on the scene, was he in any temple or any um, building? No, the Messiah was in the street. The Messiah was amongst the people. The Messiah didn't go to any temples or buildings to preach to the people. He was amongst the people. He was in the streets. All right? So the scriptures say that the Most High dwell of night in temples made with hands. So you got a lot of our people, which there's nothing wrong with having a building. There's nothing wrong with having a school. Right? But... Your key focus shouldn't be a building or school. Your key focus should be learning the ways of the Lord. Your key focus should be repentance, born again, seeking salvation. Your key focus shouldn't be investments into this world. Because this world is going to pass away by the way of fire. This up and coming third world's war. Alright? Yeah. Yeah. Like the like the elder said, alright, our wisdom is found on the streets. You know, because it's the scriptures say uh, what the Lord said, when two or three are gathered in my name, they are mine the midst of. You know, so the most high dwelleth with the with his mouthpiece, which is his, his servants, the prophets, and they out there on the highways and byways as commanded by the most high. And that's, that's where the Most High dwells, man. Right? That's also known as the secret place of the Most High. But I'm going to go. Right. And he ain't nothing physical. That's a show in itself, you know what I mean? There's nothing physical. The scripture say that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. That's spiritual that you said that. Right? He that abideth the Lord shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that um, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous runneth into it in our safe. Wisdom is found in the streets. Showing you this thing is spiritual. Right? It's a balance of spiritual and physical. Because there's physical things you have to do, right? You have to come to the streets. You have to teach this word in the streets. You have to uh, rehearse the righteous acts. Those are the physical things you have to do. But then once again, it's about the inward man. It's about the mentality. It's about the mind frame, the, the, the lifestyle, the way of thinking, your habits. Right? Go ahead. It says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me? Yeah, what house are you going to build for the Lord? If heaven is his throne, which is outer space, which is a dimension that you can't even see, and the earth is his footstool, that just shows how great the Most High is to the, to the planet. If the earth is his footstool, right? So the Lord is mightier than the heavens and the earth. <laughs> what house are you going to build for the Lord? That was the question posed to you. So if you focus it on making a synagogue and making temples or building schools, you're missing, you missing the mark, man. Yeah. It says, said the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Yeah, where is the Lord going to rest his head at? If once again the heavens is a stone and the earth is his footstool. So where is the Lord going to rest at in your temple? There ain't nowhere for him to rest. That's a um yeah. rhetorical That's a rhetorical question. There's no answer to it. there's no answer to that. Yeah. It says, Have not my hand made all these things. Have not my hand made all these things that you say you gonna make for me? Uh, uh, Matthew 18 and 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, Beautiful. there am I in the midst of them. So that's the church, right? That's the body of the Lord. Where two or three are gathered. It's three brothers. 
So what does that mean? You're in church service. This is a church comes from the Greek word ecclesia, which means to call out. Who are we calling out to? The Lord's people. What are we calling out about? To repent, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What are we calling out about? The warnings of the great evils and perils the Lord is about to bring. The Lord said, give them warning from me. So we are warning you that great evil is about to come to America. And you need to repent or get caught up in the great evils. What are the great evils you say? Famine, the lack of food, people starving to death, pestilence, people being sick to death, earthquakes are gonna swallow people up, right? The third world's war, you're gonna be drafted away to war. The mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip, all right? which the judgment for that is death. These are the great evils that's coming upon earth. So this is what we're falling out about. So this, two or three are gathered in my name, he is in the midst of us. So once again, you're in church service. Gag is out. Right. Wow. It's Acts 17. Acts 17, we start at verse 24. It says, God, the most high that made the world, matter of fact, here we go. Acts 17, verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I pass by, and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, mm -hmm. whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Right, so you had men of Athens, and when it's men of Athens, this is Israelites. These are Jews dwelling in the land of Athens. These are not the native or indigenous people of Athens, because Athens is a Greek city. All right, which comes, I believe, from Athena, the goddess Athena. They named it after the goddess Athena. All right, I'll look it up because I know y'all, common boy warriors, want to fact check that. But these are Jews dwelling in the land of Athens. All right, and they was they had an altar to the unknown god. So Paul was there to elaborate and explain to them. Who that unknown God was? Yeah, I got it. Got it. This is um Athens, named after Athena. Yeah. It says here, it is well known that Athens was the most popular and glorious town of ancient Greece. Its residents managed to develop a wonderful civilization that is admired till today. It is also known that the city got its name from Athena, the goddess of wisdom and courage. There you go. So these are Jews dwelling in that land. That, uh, right. It says, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, the most high that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, Dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So Paul, once again, is elaborating. It's the same thing that we're doing today. Right? Get that, pull it out strong, that we can't get that body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pulling down strongholds and every vain thing every vain thing that lies against the word of the most high. That's what Paul did. It says the most high that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, one of not the temples. Made with hands. So the unknown God that they was worshiping, that they was giving devotion to, Paul elaborating 
He is Lord of heavens and earth. And he dwelleth not in synagogues, churches, mosques, and wherever you gather to worship at. Okay? It says, neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything. Yeah, neither is he worship with men's hands as he needed anything. So it's, you ain't got to build anything. You ain't got to build an altar to the unknown God to worship the Heavenly Father or His Son, right? You ain't gotta construct something physically to worship the Heavenly Father and His Son. That's what Paul was the last thing, right? It says, seeing he giveth life, excuse me, it says, seeing he giveth to all life and breath in all things, and hath made one, and hath made of one blood all nations and have made of one blood all nations of men to, for to dwell on all the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Here's the book of 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds. Can you take a picture of this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Second Corinthians 10 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the Heavenly Father. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Alright? What does that mean? We're not physically fighting anybody. We're not taking up arms. We're not gathering weapons of mass destruction, and guns, and bombs, and bullets, because we are fighting a spiritual battle. This is a spiritual war that we're facing. We understand that you're physically here, but there's something greater than the physical, which is the spiritual, the thing that you cannot see, that you cannot feel, that you cannot hear, that you cannot taste. It's called the spiritual or the soul. Okay. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Heavenly Father. So casting down imaginations, right? Let's look at that word imagination. I got something next time, yeah. Oh, it's uh goes back to the Greek. Lagamos, which almost sounds like logic, a reckoning, com computation, a reasoning, such as is hostile to, it says Christian faith, or I should say Hamashiach, Hamashiachian faith. That's right. A judgment decision such as conscience passes. There you go. So ideas that are opposite of the faith. Of the truth, of the doctrine, right? It's been like that for a while. I got the imagination of Google. It says the faculty or action forming new ideas or images or concepts of external objects not present to the senses. So these are new thoughts, right? So the Lord, the scripture say, we cast it out every new idea, right? What are some of the new ideas that? The Heavenly Father and His Son look like Caucasian people. That's a new idea. That's a new conception on earth. The Heavenly Father and His Son do not look Caucasian. Right? What's new ideas? God loves everybody. That's a new idea. God doesn't love everybody. God hates people. Right? That's in the Bible. You can't say God doesn't hate people. Right? Or well, God is a racist. Right? Those are written in the Bible. That's found in the Bible. Yeah. I me. Mean, I have the NLT. Second Corinthians 10 and 2. We use the most high mighty weapons, not worldly weapons. Um, not worldly weapons. Yes. Your guns, your knives, your swords, your pistols, your automatics. We don't use those, guys. To knock down the strongholds of human 
reasoning. Yeah, to knock down the strongholds of human reason. And what is human reason? It is okay for two men to lay with each other. That is human reason. Sarcastically speaking, and we ain't with that whole bullshit. Sorry, bro. Two women laying with each other. That is human reason, right? This world, oh, the new thing. You gotta call biological men and biological women cis men and cis women, right? That's human reason. You can transform into whatever you wanna be, whatever you identify as. That's human reason. But God shuts all that shit down. God shuts down all the thoughts of what's right to me and what's wrong to me. Right? God shuts all that shit down. <laughs> he said, I created man and woman. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. I may say too, it's really the separation of carnal reasoning and spiritual reasoning. The majority of the people are carnal, and their mindset is carnal, right? They have, they, their thoughts are, these people's thoughts is not of the spirit. This is why they think the way they do, right? But when you think spiritual, this is the way we bring it out. But this is why, this is the problem. People are not spiritual out here, you know? What does the scripture say? To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Continue on, it says, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. To destroy false arguments. God sent his son down to love everybody, to save everybody. That's a false argument, man. Uh, replacement theology, that's a false argument. The Trinity, that's a false argument. Right? The Heavenly Father and His Son look Caucasian. That's a false argument. God is a woman. That's a false argument. These are the things that humans, human beings come up with. And y'all okay with it. Y'all okay with it. These things that are taboo. Y'all okay with it. Y'all okay with the taboo things. Even though God said it's wrong. Because you don't care what God said. You don't believe in God. And you will get the unbelief reward. The incredulity reward. Yeah. It says we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing the most high. We destroy every proud obstacle, man. Uh, God loves everybody. Salvation is for everybody. Right. You know, the Gentiles. Gentiles. Love, love, love. Gentiles. Love myself to death. Love, love, love. love, love. Gentiles. <laughs> you know, as a Christian. Gentiles. Right? Love. But nothing. You don't show no love in your actions and your deeds. You don't show no love. Which, what is love according to the Bible? The keeper of God's commandments. That's real love. I ain't talking about Mary J. Block. This is Luke 21, verse 15. It says, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Mm -hmm. Right. So, the Most High, like the scriptures say, I believe it's 2nd Ezra. It says, uh, Speaking the ears of my people the words of prophecies. I will put in thy mouth, save the Lord, right? Because the Most High had, just like, you know, that, that, is, that is scriptures coming to mind, when the Most High told Moses, because um, Moses couldn't speak well, you know, he said, who made man's mouth? You know, and he told him that, you know, you know, I'm going to be with you, roughly paraphrasing, you know, just go out there and, and, and speak to, to Israel, okay? I can make a point too. When you read Second Ezra 15, it says, which I will put in thy mouth. But they are faithful in truth. So the Heavenly Father ultimately is the one that speaks to us. Exactly. We're just vessels. We're just pawns. Like just that the pawn, the pawn is, you know, 
can be replaced. You know, and, and that's what we are. We're just, we're just vessels. You know, and like it says right here, it says he gave us wisdom, which all your adversaries will not be able to gain, say, nor resist. Right? Because you know, you can have the best scholars, man. You know, you look at the classic videos of when the apostles on 34th Street, how the scholars used to come up. You know, how they went to Yale. They went, they, they battled Bible thumpers, and they went to Christian churches, which, you know, we don't advocate that now, but that was at that time, you know. And all these guys, they couldn't, they couldn't go toe to toe, man. They couldn't, they didn't have the stamina. They had a spiritual stamina, right? They, they didn't, like, talk about spiritual warfare. They didn't have their they, 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 they spiritual weapons rightly equipped, right? All right? We, we, we had we had uh, chariots while you 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 fucking uh you you were the scriptures say the wisdom of this world is foolish to the most high. You people of the world had fucking fighter jets while we had chariots. Spiritual. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Continuing on, actually second Corinthians ten and five in the NLT, it says we destroy every proud obstacle. That keeps people from knowing the Heavenly Father. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Yahweh Shah. There you go, man. And remember, rebellion as, is as the sin of witchcraft. And the scriptures say, I suffer not a wish to live. So we shut down whatever lies and misconceptions your pastor, your reverend, your rabbis teach you. And guess what? It's only for the elect. It ain't meant for the masses or for everybody. It's only for the elect. Because only the elect are going to see and understand and perceive. While the rest of the people are going to continue laws to the source. While the rest of the people are going to just walk Moses on down the road, man. Yeah. Romans 11 and 7. What then? Israel had not attained that which is seeking for, but the election had obtained it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Israel haven't obtained that which they seeking for. Because yeah, you got our people in, the, in this Islam shit, you got our people in this Moorish um, doctrine, you know? You got our people in um, 5%, you got our people with the philosophies of this world, um, law of attraction, we got our people um, in all these um, churches and things, man. And, and, and then you, you got our people trying to build a generational wealth. They think they're going to get themselves out, out of this situation when only the Lord going to buy us back. Only the Lord can get us out. You know what I mean? So our people are fine now what they're seeking for, man. They don't even, a lot of our people don't know their nationality. That's right. You don't know who you are. You don't know who the Most High is, who His Son is. You don't know who Yahweh is. You don't know who Yahweh Shai is. You don't know your identity, man. Where your real homeland is supposed to be at. That's how people are lost. The proof right here, verse 8. According as it is written, the Most High hath given them the spirit of slumber. Yes. Eyes that they should not see. Spiritual sleep. They spiritually sleep. You know, um, the, the doors, the, the doors, the Lord they open the door to their spirit that they receive the information. Their table is made of snare. So they they they're spiritually blind, spiritually deaf. They're spiritually blind and spiritually deaf, and they spiritually don't have any understanding. So they um deaf, dumb, and blind. Isaiah 69 also proves right then and there that the Heavenly Father does not want everybody to understand exactly what we're speaking. The only ones that the Heavenly wants to really understand what we're speaking is the elect. So when people scoff and they scoff, we don't, we don't, we're don't, we not concerned with that. Scoff is for all you want. Judgment is coming your way. But the elect is the main one that we're concerned about. That's really who we only teach. Right? Matthew 13 and 9. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, 
because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. And the elect are not going to budge. They're not going to argue. They're not going to dispute. They're going to automatically get it. And they're the ones that have gotten it from the very jump because they were with Yahweh Shai from the very beginning. And this is why we were called to do this and Lord willing chosen. We get it. We understand. So when, when people come up to us and it's really hard for them and they're scratching their head and they just keep having that spirit where they just can't get it, then you just can't get it. That's it. If you, we're moving on. That's right. You know? Because at the end of the day, we're only here to edify the elect of the nation of Israel. Which they are throughout the United States. Absolutely. You know? In the NLT it says, He replied, You are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. Wow, you are permitted. That's heavy because the Heavenly Father truly wanted us to understand this. And what's heavy about it all is, is that we're constantly evolving and growing. And when, it, and, and when you evolve and you grow, you hold on to it that's that much more because it becomes even that much more precious. You know, just like um, I think the analogy in you know, when you work out or when you're playing sports, the more you elevate in it, the more it becomes more passionate to you. Yeah. So when you elevate in anything that you do, especially this, that we were really called to, it really becomes something that it's like, wow, you know, like um, like a like a tree deep deeply rooted in a branch, or I should say, or a tree deeply rooted and grounded. Right, so that it won't even be able to get plucked out. Right, uh, there's a scripture I believe in, um, I believe it's in uh, Ecclesiastes. I'm not sure which one it is, but it says, um, an honorable plant, uh, and it, it, it talks about an honorable plant, and then a dishonorable seed. Lord willing, we are that honorable plant. And as we're planted, right, become, because we become real sincere. You know, and you have the ones that are dishonorable on your sheet, you're seeing them. You got it. Sirach 10 and 19. They that fear the Lord are a sure seed. That's it. And they that love him an honorable plant. That's it. A sure seed. And you can tell. You can feel it through the spirit. But you have these false camps, automatically you know that they're dishonorable. You know? Look at their works. You know? Their works are not of, of, of representing Yahweh Shai. It's with contention, with strife, with beef, with this, with worldly ways. One foot in the world and the other in the truth. Yep. What did the Heavenly Father say about a lukewarm individual? That he will spew you out of his mouth. That's it. They that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. That's it. They that transgress the commandments are a deceived a deceivable seed. That's it. And you're seeing that. Look at the behavior, and we have to mention it. Look at the behavior of these other religions, these false teachers, these false leaders. Look at that behavior versus the behavior of us. Right? And now with everything going on with this whole anti-SEM, you know, the truth is eventually going to come out that they were the ones that were not really it. You know? Because they're not going to be the ones that are going to get grabbed up in that time. Exactly. You know? They're really not. Exactly. There ain't going to be no great persecution on them. Of those people. Nope. You're going to see who the great persecution or the great tribulation is going to happen to. And that's all we're going to say on that. That's it. It's Matthew 6 and 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's it. And this is where I would treasure. The scripture says, store for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where moth and rust don't corrupt. But store not for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where thieves come through, break through, and steal. So all these so-called wealthy people, and lesser wealthy people, they're going to go, they're going to go and get that shit. Your main brothers. Yeah, your main weathers and all, and all of them, your Warren Buffers, you know that. Already. They already shit the problem. Yeah. Most likely. They don't know. I, it would, yeah. I would say the lesser, the lesser elite. 
A will be chipped. Yeah. You know? The lesser you, like the Warren Buffets, the rich billionaires and shit like that. But the majority of them, they will be. So um, back to Matthew 13 and 12. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he has. And that goes back to the parable of the talent. You know, you have those that go out and, and bring more fruit. And you got the ones that just put it under hiding. You know, you have this talent and you're hiding it. You know, and, and that individual, when Yahweh Shah came up to him, he was shook. You know? Because he hid it. He hid his talent. So when we come out here, we're constantly bringing out this word because we're trying to bring in more fruit. What fruit is that? The elect. We're not concerned with the masses, with the people out in the world. The people in the world are more concerned with worldly ways, That's worldly right. behavior. <laughs> but what's the latest gossip? What's the latest trend? What's the latest bullshit coming out? That's your concern. All of that, the scriptures tell us what? That the fashion of this world passes away. Just like every empire that ever existed and it passed away, what gives you this impression that this one, Babylon the worst is not going to pass away. It's going to pass away. And it's going to pass away in, in, in such a destruction that it has never happened to any other empire that ever existed. That's right. Yeah. No. Matthew 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And our light is the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And that's when we're letting it shine. You got people that when, when they're really intrigued by this word, they gravitate to it. Yeah. Really, the elect is going to be like that. They're going to gravitate to it. They're going to be like, wow, look at that light. Like, look at that bright, shining light. What is that? I want, I want that light. Right? But you got individuals that are acting like vampires. You know, when they see this light, they're like, ah, nah. They're blinded by it. Yep. You have a... You have a uh, Somebody ever came on to you and was like, yo, you look like you believe in the Bible. Because mm. it's a vibration that's on us. Or well, they'll say, you look like you know a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. You don't have to have this countenance of a simple-minded Negro. Of a simple-minded Negro. You think it's... Right. These niggas got their whole starter kit, the blunts, yeah, you know, yeah. GMO foods, black and mild. the black and milds, the 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 the, 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 the dark continents, yeah. the dark continents, you know, the mama's boy, you know, it's rolling the eyes, pants off your ass. But what's, what's going to be right alongside with that starter kit is that RFID microchip. That's right. You know they're going to make commercials off that. If oh, they yeah. made a fucking song about get the backs. They're gonna do the same shit with the RFID microchip. Best believe it. Oh, yeah. Chip you know they're gonna do that. Chip up or die. Exactly. Chip or die. Yep. And then it was back set thing though. Exactly. Right. It says that they may see if the works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Yeah, and that's really who we glorify. We glorify the power of the universe. Right? And His only begotten Son, who's gonna be the King of the universe. Right? And all we're doing is coming out here and doing what? Telling you the truth. The scriptures tell us, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? No. This world teaches you and feeds you nothing but bullshit and lies. Manipulation, manipulation deception, all of that. A lot of these songs promote a lot of adultery. I'm going to take the girl, I'm going to do this. What kind of promotion is that, man? That's nothing but... The hatred, a lot of hatred is pushed in this world. Here, us brothers, we don't even hate on each other, absolutely not. There is no room for hating in this. None. But guess what? The Heavenly Father hates a group of people that are absolutely trying to kill you, slowly. And that's the nation of Edom. No. Uh, this is uh, Amos. Chapter 5, verse 10. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. Yeah, because all we're doing is giving you the truth. That's all we're doing. We're giving you the truth. We're giving you, we're giving you the raw truth. And the beautiful thing about this truth is we're coming with articles. 
We're giving you breakdowns. We're breaking it down to the to the most simplest of of your mindset, right? We're not making it so hard. Even though Paul said that, if you forget that, um, am I come? I'm not coming to um, a hard speech or something like that. I can't remember off the top, but basically, Paul spoke to the individuals that weren't really um, up to par with the understanding. So he was like, I'm gonna give it to you very simple, as simple as, as can be. That's why through the spirit lately, your uh, brother's been bringing out the NLT, the GNT, right? Because we know that there's elect members out there that can't really grasp it um, that strong. So when you give it to them uh, as simple as, as can be, they're like, wow, I get it, you know? And it's, it's been like that through spirit. Make your plan upon table. I got it. You saying something, Sha? Make your plan upon table. That's another go. one. There you go. I have a group. I have a group. That's true. This is Second Corinthians three and twelve. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Ooh. That's it. Very plain. Very simple. Second Corinthians three and twelve. There might be another one, but that's good too, absolutely. Because it, that's really what we're trying to do. The key component is of edify. The word edify means to build, right? All we're trying to do is to build. Build up your spirit, especially in the times to come. We won't need that. We're going to need that type of ammunition. And when I say ammunition, I mean spiritual ammunition. We don't need our spirit to be built up. Because... The flesh is going to get shaken up when shit hits the fan. But the spirit, like the scripture says, um, that the flesh um, is weak, but the spirit is indeed willing. Roughly properties. Because this flesh is absolutely weak. You're telling me that if you don't see somebody getting their head blown up, it ain't going to shake you the hell up? When, when the earthquake hit, we were already like, damn. But we understood, like, yes, we're getting closer. So, really... What, what needs to be built up in these last days is our spirit, more than anything. The way, the way it's going to be, you're going to have to just deal with it. Yeah, you're going to have like, to deal with it. Well, yeah. We know it's going to happen, so at the end of the day, we know that the Most High is going to be with us, just like he's always been. You know, we, we've been, you know, going through our history, you know, of our forefathers, they've, they've been through a lot of uh, perilous times. You know, when you read the scriptures, that's why the scriptures say what's all was written aforetime was written for our learning. So, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, although this is going to be a way worse than anything you have experienced. However, we know that, you know, if, when it comes to pass, that means the end is near. So we just got to have to deal with it. Even Yahweh Shai said, I believe um, he said it. He said, I am with you even all the way until the end. That's right. So we know that's a, that's that's top-notch key that our Lord is going to be with us all the way until the end. But Papa Shah, you can get second edges, I believe it's 16 towards the end, where it says, um, I think we can start at 74. Amos 5 to 10, they hate him that rebuke him in the gate. They abhor him that speak of uprightly. And the poor is basically hating, having hatred towards you, you know? Because all we're giving you is the exposure of who, of who the people uh, call uh, a white or, or, or the true enemy, which is Esau Edom, right? We're just giving you the exposure of who is really running the world, right? Of who the earth is given into the hands of of who has covered the faces of the judges thereof, of who has lied to you. We're only giving you of the ones that are confederate against you, which is Esau, Edom, and the other nations. And they right now are lords over us. Right? Look at the ones that are truly lords over us. You got these Moabites that you can barely understand their damn speech. You got these Elamites that we call them Bible words. Every time they speak, they're just like, yes, like that. Right? You got these Ishmaelites, right? Lords over us. All of these other nations, Kushites, I mean, you name it, Moabites, Ammonites, they're lords over us. Right? They ain't got no type of flavor the way the children of Israel got the flavor. We are the salt of the earth. 
Right? All of these other nations want to be like us. Even if you see in sports, who are the ones that are dominant? The so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. It ain't the other nations. It's really us. We're dominating in everything and everything. Anything and everything. Uh, second, Ezra, second Ezra 16 and verse 74. It says, Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand. Yes, that's his trouble. Jacob's trouble. Right? And when we say Jacob's trouble, we're talking about our forefather, Jacob, which is the progenitor of the 12 tribes that you see here on the sign. Right? From the tribe of Judah all the way down to Issachar. Right? The so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, so you could understand. Right? Their time of trouble is coming. And it's going to be a, a trouble that has never happened since the beginning of time. Right? That's what's coming. And that's what we're warning you. That's another thing that we do as men of the Lord. Right? We don't only watch, but we're giving you the warning that is sent from on high. So we're giving you the warning of this is what's coming to pass. Because this is what our, our, the Heavenly Father said. God saved the Lord. Right. It says, but I will deliver you from the same. Right, so that's another thing. And we faithfully believe in that. We know that the Heavenly Father and the only begotten Son are going to deliver that. Deliver us from that. Now you are going to have martyrs, right? For the ones that were, that were a testimony of, of, of our Lord and Savior. For the testimony of His Word and for the testimony of our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shahamashiach. Right? So you're going to have some that are going to be beheaded. Right? But they're going to be raised up first. Right? Right along the ones that have died for the words. Yahweh Shahamashiach. It says, Be ye not afraid, neither doubt. And that's that's another faith we see. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt. Right? The Most High is your God. Yes, and He's going to guide us. He's going to guide us in the time to come. And this is why we come out here and try to do the best, uh, the will of the Lord to the very best of our ability. We do our lessons. You know, we, we, we pray to the Heavenly Father. We try to fast. Because fasting will allow you to get that much more closer to the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son. Right? So that more... So you can be uh, more nervous in the spirit, more built up. It says, it says, and the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord power, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. And the scripture says, uh, I believe this in Psalms 119, David said, through thy precepts I get understanding. What does the scripture say that? Precept wants to be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Because all of it is a, is a, is a puzzle that we're putting together. And when, when you put those pieces together, it all makes sense. It, it makes sense clearer and clearer. The veil that we once had over our eyes is completely it, it, it's gone. But guess what? A lot of you people have your eyes uh, blinded. You don't under, you don't see what's going on. You don't understand what's going on. And this is why the scripture says that uh, Yahweh Shai believe said that men's hearts shall be failing them for fear. That's another thing that's going to come. You're going to have a lot of people dropping dead, having heart attacks, strokes. Right? The ones that are already suffering from high blood pressure. Forget about it. This is Psalms 119 and 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe a precept is like a command. It is. You know? So everything that is written in the scripture is commanded of us. This is why this is truly the book of life. Right. And we must follow by it to the very best of our ability. You know? 
know, we, the scripture says in the book of, uh, I believe it's Judges 5 and 11, that we got to rehearse the righteous acts. That means we keep the ceremonial laws to the best of our ability, the dietary laws, the civil laws, and the moral laws, which is what's comprised of the commandments, right? Because we got people that eat uh, abominable foods not knowing that the Heavenly Father told us not to eat them. So you got people that are willingly eating shrimp, crab, lobster, and pork, and then they wonder why they're in the ER left and right. Taking pills left and right that is further destroying them. You already destroyed yourself by eating abominable foods. Now you gotta go to these devils to get uh, prescribed medicines for the bullshit that you just got to further be destroyed. This man is true, this devil is there to oppress you, not help you. But I believe there's a preacher that says, and they help forward the affliction. Yep. Listen to NLT. Your commandments give me understanding. Wow. No wonder I hate every false way of <laughs> life. Beauty boy. Yep. That's it. So we are commanded to understand the book of life the way it was intended to. See, the people, the way they walk, the way they walk and their behavior is flood-like behavior. It is fire and brimstone-like yeah. behavior. Yeah. That's their behavior. And I say fire and brimstone because that's what fell upon the uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities because of their wicked ways. And you're seeing that here in Babylon. What is promoted is that two men can be together, two women together. That a man can be a woman and that a woman can be a man. All of this confusion of having to call people he, she, they, a, all this bullshit, all this madness. When the Heavenly Father clearly said, male and female created he, them. But you disregard that. So what is the scripture saying in Proverbs 13 and 13? Yes, the book of Shah. Proverbs 13, verse 13. Whosoever, whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. That's it. So you're literally looking at people that are going to be destroyed. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's what you're looking at. Yeah. So everybody that, this is why we don't care if you laugh, if you point fingers, right. and this, that, and that, we don't care. Right. Because we, Lord willing, we are going to be in this class, right. looking down at you from all the bullshit you ever said. See, back in the day, you know, say something. Okay. See, back in the day, when these prophecies wasn't speaking like that, you know, you would talk shit and laugh, but nowadays, you know, ain't, ain't too no, much shit to Yeah, ain't no, ain't really too much shit to scoff and laugh about because if you look at what's going on, especially during the pandemic, yep. all right, but even now with inflation and, yep. you know, war all around the world, right, and all these different signs in, in the heavens and in the earth, there's really nothing for you to really laugh at when you see a so-called Negro, Latino out there in the streets, right. you know? It's really, you, it's like, you think about it, what can you really laugh at? Mm -hmm. He's obviously out there for, you know, he knows something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's not just gonna be standing out there teaching the Bible for no reason. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But about the shot, you could get um, the book of Samuel where and he came on the scene and it was shook up. Right, I got you. Two. Because that's exactly um, how you know that we're in different times. They're not shook when we're out here, but they were back in the day. When the prophet was on the scene, they were already like, damn, something's up. But that goes to show you that the minds of these people have become further docile. Where they, they, they're so docile and they're so far gone that they literally laugh at the fact that we're giving you future events. Well, it's the entertainment and folly that's out there. Yeah. Because the folly is a thing to distract people. Like, he's got all, he got all these um, magazines, 
Women Glamour, the celebrity magazines, whether it's on a whether it's on a little booklet or a newsstand or the internet, the, the, the Instagram and all of that. So if people just on their phone like just walking, across the street traffic, not paying attention. So basically they got that sleep signal like they live. Sleep. That is sleep. That. Yes. Sleep. That's beautiful, right? Because what you saw in that movie, which is heavy that you brought that out. But we got the spiritual Hoffman lenses. <laughs> the Hoffman lenses and the, the glasses and Hoffman shades and the, and the Hoffman um, contacts. Right. So these devils are looking behind that screen and they're saying, we got one that can see. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why the elite like the Project Megiddo, we got the, we got some back to sleep. Yeah, yeah. But that goes to show you that when you see that movie, a lot of the things that were um, in the billboards was consume, sleep. When you saw the dollar bill, it said, "This is your God." Obey, obey, consume, and that's what you people see out here. This is why they got nothing but retail stores out here. But pretty soon, just like Elder Apostle Gabor did a lesson, where in, back in, 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 in L.A., they got a whole bunch of these um, empty stores for a lease. A lot of stores are closing. A lot of Macy's, a lot of um, the Tar paper, Targets. Targets. All of these stores are closing. That should automatically give you a clear inclination yeah. that America is out of here. We used to be on that side, but we stopped because it's, it's not enough light. Three businesses closed. Look at that. Real good. Lights out. That's what's going to happen to America. It's three Lights business. Out. Yep, lights out for America. It's something I wanted to say. Two points was um, that you had said something. Both of y'all brothers had said something. They laugh at nobody. We don't care. The scriptures say, the Messiah said, woe unto to them that laugh now, for they shall mourn and weep. And like the brother was saying, due to this uh, economic decline and the inflation, you crackers are the new niggas. The middle class are the new niggas. Right? You're impoverished now. You you are sitting there, the middle class and the, the middle class Edomites and the lower class Edomites. You are sighing and crying like Jake now, talking about I work two jobs and I gotta decide whether to put gas in my car or feed my kids. I ain't got enough to feed my kids. And this is middle class society. This is the working class, right? Talking about you don't know if you got enough to pay for your mortgage or your bills or to put gas in your car and feed your kids. You gotta decide which one you gotta do. And this is the most money you ever made in a year. But you yet you still the poorest. And you gotta make financial decisions whether your kids eat, whether you put gas in your car, or whether you pay this bill or not. Because this is all a part of the signs of the times. The curses that's that's on Jake. It's coming on the house of Edom. That's coming on Babylon now. Yeah, Dr. Jefferson. You know it's bad when the stuff, the, 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 the crumbs that they's giving Jake, they, they themselves are now taking hold of those crumbs and they're taking them away from Jake. You know? Yes, yeah, this place is falling apart. As it was prophesied. Because like the brother said, just like every other empire had its rise, Every empire had its fall. And what is so different about America? America rose, right? 1700s, uh, 1492, the conquest of Christopher the Devil Columbus, right? And it rose, it, it departed from Britain, right? It broke off from Britain during the uh, 1700s. It rose to be an empire, a mighty empire. When it when it when it uh, dropped the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Naz Nagasaki, right? And now it's on its decline. This empire rose and now it's falling, and you're witnessing and living in the fall of America. But to go to quote the priest that you wanted, I, this is First Samuel, sixteen and four. And Samuel did that which Yahweh spake. And he came to Bethlehem 
and the elders of the town trembled <laughs> at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? Yeah, no. We don't. We're letting you know that there's impending danger coming It's coming your way. Coming to, to the doors of Babylon. It's already here, but not to the level that you're going to see it that you have never seen before. You're going to actually... These movies were giving you glimpses of troops out here, shutting down uh, cities. What does the scripture says? That a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. That's coming to America. Why do you think there's regions in all of the, in, in, there's 10 regions in the whole United States? When you see the, the show Colony, that right there showed you that certain regions were, were blocked off. You weren't able to go from one city to the next. Yeah, they only went to four or three seasons of that, right? Yeah. That's my shit. Yeah. Colony. I saw one of the actors, too. Yeah, so that right there gave you a glimpse of, of, of what's really going to come. And these stores closing down, uh, you know, that is a, a, the beginning of the mirth of, 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 of America being gone. Mirth is amusement. Joy, excitement, all of that is gonna go, be gone. Right? People were scared to go to the factory, I think it was. That was like the concentration camp. Yeah. Second Ezra is 15 and 12. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. And America is a representation of ancient Egypt, yep. right? Egypt, I believe, uh, in Hebrew is Matazaria. Mm -hmm. It's bondage, I believe. It's bondage, captivity, yep. right? And really, that's what we're in, right? Look at the way we work and the wages that can barely get us by, right? Not only that, but if you if you uh, look at the quotes such as what one of the um, one of the Rothschilds I believe he said he said I don't want a nation of workers I mean I don't want a nation of thinkers I want a nation of workers so that automatically should let you know they just want you to work 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 and consume 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 yep. eat 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 don't think stay on your phone. And, and just be docile. Or be busy, 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 you go. busy. You gotta constantly be busy. Yes. Until you drop dead. So you, you constantly busy. You can't, you can't think. Focus on anything. Yeah, that was the plan. You right. shall own nothing and be happy. Right. right. So the elites, the ones that love you, are telling you this. Right? Yeah. The Lord made us, the Lord made us free. Because we got knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And we know the curses that we are there. And we know... This whole fraudulent system, so we're not caught like like the world is. Mm -hmm. We know we know money is inflated, and we know it's like a representation of electricity. It, it keeps moving circular, like this. The money is a, like a, it's moving like this, like electricity. You know what I mean? You can't you can't really you can't say you can have some reserve, but you can't save that thing. You, you can't. You got it. Got it. Got to constantly be flipping. Yeah. We understand the game. St. John 8, 32. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And us back here, are absolutely, starting with the elder apostles, and elders and bishops on down, I should say, and us brothers, we're absolutely free, right? Because we understand the truth, right? But a lot of you people are not. You're, you're spiritually dead. You're, your mind is in bondage. You don't know what the hell is going on. You're in a deep, deep sleep. And this is what the elites wanted. So what? So that it's easy to get you to take the Quran. So that you, so it's easy to have control over you. This is why they want to make you sleep. They want to keep you in the dark side state of mind. So that it's easy to control the cattle. All right, move along, cattle. It's time to get branded. So that that way we know all of your whereabouts. All of your finances, where are you going? Oh, you have a say? All right, well, give me that. No more wages. Say something else. 
Oh, you have another safe. Put them in a concentration camp. You have no idea what's about to come. It, it's, it's really gonna be extra oppressive. You thought it was oppressive now? You have no idea. But, you know, like the scripture says in Job 5 and 12, you're disappointed with the vices of the practice so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. In other words, their new world order is not gonna last. A new equipment. Announcing the birth. Yeah. Right, this is uh Second Peter chapter chapter three, verse ten. It says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. For you. <laughs> For you. Yeah. Because we we're hastening to come and follow the Lord. We can't wait for him to come. That's right. It says, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt away with fervent heat. By way of what? Intercontinental ballistic missiles. And you have a few countries that already have these missiles ready. Yeah, America got But there's many countries that got That's right. And it, it ain't written in, in the book of Revelation, the ninth chapter, that 200,000 thousand horsemen, which is a representation of what? Missiles. That is gonna plunge America, rightfully so. There was a lot of wickedness going on during the time of the flood. A lot of wickedness, that's why the flood had to come. Yeah. There was a lot of wickedness that was taking place during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. There's a lot of wickedness taking place now. So 200 million missiles is overkill. Yeah, and that's going to increase the land mass again, like how it was before the flood with the Pangea. The flood yeah. broke up, broke it up, and now you have the continents. Now this new flood of these missiles with this fire is going to span the land back. Yeah. Yeah. New land's going to fall. Old land is going to be destroyed. Yeah. Right. So, Dr. Shub, somebody gave me, I believe it's Wisdom of Solomon, where it says that, um, that uh, a monument for an unbelieving soul. There was no coincidence that our Lord and Savior said, Remember Lot's fight. So, it, it was only one specific uh, sentence. Remember Lot's wife. Remember this ungodly woman that wanted her possessions. What happened to her? She got turned into a pillar of salt. Yep. And she's still there to this day as yep. a monument. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 7. Of wickedness even to this day, the wasteland that spoketh is a testimony and plant bearing fruit that never come to ripeness. And standing pillar of salt is a monument of an unbelieving soul. So America is going to be a monument Ooh. of unbelieving souls, right? And if you look at, you can even go on the YouTube and check this out for yourselves, because I saw it myself. And it was an individual that went to where Sodom and Gomorrah once was. And he was touching the, 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 the ground, and he was touching the, the, the walls. It easily crumbled. And the guy was saying this has to have come from somewhere unique that it has never um, come from. Yeah, the heavens. So that proved that the way the wrath of the Heavenly Father is going to come so aggressive that it, 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 you, could, you could just tell what kind of monument America is going to be. It's just going to be a memorial. And we're going to point and be like, this is where all the ungodly people were at. Word. All of the wickedness took place there. There was a whole bunch of, uh, you know, degenerate individuals. All Wicked. of that. Wicked. Wicked. Right? And, and what does it say? It says that the smoke and the torment ascended up forever. Wow. 
You know how long when 9-11 hit, that smoke lasted in the, in the sky? That, that, it, I think it lasted about two weeks or so. Yeah. It was still in the sky burning. Right? And that's nothing compared to 200 million missiles of all types. Because they got the Satan 2 and, and the ones that are so fast and swift. I mean, in one hour. You know that an hour is not that long. How, mu how much square foot is uh, America? 3,000 3, from the uh, west to the east. 3,000 square miles. Going across is 3,000. But they summarize it all as five, right? Something along the line. But from, from east to west is 3,000. 4,662 kilometers. Okay. 280. That's all of it, yeah. yeah. All the square miles in one hour. You know how fast that is? That's what the scripture says in our book, I believe it's the book of Isaiah, um, that I would um, I would sweep it with the vessel or the yeah. piece of destruction. destruction. That's a sweeping agent. So fast. This is 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And we are a representation of Noah because all we're preaching is righteousness. Right? Remember, only eight souls. Only eight. Only eight souls compared to the amount of souls that were there during that time period. So that means everybody else was doing wicked as all hell. How many are going to be delivered in this time period? 144,000, right? Which you can fit in one city and the innumerable multitude. We're talking about maybe a state and a whole bunch of people destroyed. Right. That's a lot of people. Right. It said, it says, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those after that should live ungodly. After. In other words, he made Sodom and, Sodom and Gomorrah an example. The heavenly flood, remember that the scripture says that I declare the end from the beginning. The heavenly flood already knew. He already planned. He it's already planned. These are, you're looking at, like, I would say through spirit, you're looking at the people that are going to be destroyed. And if you see the movie um, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, man, her flesh left her body and her bones were still remaining and her spirit was still there. Yeah. You know how gruesome of a death that is? Yeah. I don't want to be a part of that. Nope. We don't want to be a part of that. Hell no. It makes sense the spirit is, is the spirit gonna still be there because the Lord gonna have his spirit guide the missiles. Yeah. Wow. You wanna make sure you don't die. Yeah. yeah. Cause you can't burn the spirit. You can't burn the spirit. Yeah. You gotta burn the body. Yeah. And keep you alive. Right. That's it's insane. That's insane. Right. It is, bro. That's insane. And this is proof why the scripture says, fear not him that can kill uh, the body. But fear him who can kill both soul and spirit. That's heaven. Who's that? The heavenly father himself, the father of all spirits. Which guess what? Um, Proverbs 16 and 4. Um, if you could get it real quick, I don't want to put it. For the days of evil. For the days of evil. Yeah. So who did he set? Who did that? The heavenly father set him up. So guess who's guiding all of his ways? The Heavenly Father. It's not Esau, Edom's doing, it's the Heavenly Father's doing. That's right. There's no such thing as free will. Exactly. No such thing. He said, I created, you gotta read it out. That's all. Proverbs 16 and 4. It says, The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked, for the day of oh, evil. That's a good Wicked for the day of evil, right? Right. Why is it emphasized fear the Lord? Because of that reason. For right that there. reason right there. That reason right there. He is 
the, he controls both sides, the right and the left. So this misconception of all oh, he's all love, he's stupid. <laughs> yeah. That's why he says, for my people are sadists, they have not known me. Yeah, you don't know the heavenly father. You don't know him. And the word sadist means stupid. You're bugging. But you're gonna very soon see the wrath of the heavenly father. Right? As it is described in the scriptures, his indignation, which is what? Righteous anger. Second Ezra, chapter 8, verse 1. And that's what he's saying. The Most High made this world for many, but the world to come for few, which is the elect. Right? And really, it's worth, it's worth rehearsing the righteous acts. Because the heavenly father created the world to come for you. So when you see us conducting ourselves in this manner, it's because we're we're ready for that. Right? Because we want that. Right? We don't want what we were once a part of because we know that we hated that. That was the old man. We hated that way of ourselves. When you come to the marvelous life, you understand like, damn, I was like that? Right. I fucking hate that nigga. <laughs> you know? It says, I will tell the assembly to Esmus, as when thou askest, the earth shall say unto thee. That it giveth much mold thereof, where our earthen vessels are made, but little dust that gold cometh of. Even so is the course of this present world. There be many created, but few shall be saved. That's right. There be many created, which you see in a whole bunch of people, right? 18 nations on the earth, but one particular nation, and 144,000 out of that nation, with the innumerable multitude, which is the men, women, and children that believe, is who the Heavenly Father has selected. Because like the scripture says in Zechariah, Two parts there and shall be cut up and die. Those two thirds are gonna come back to you alone of the elect, the ones that you see, Lord willing, doing the will of the Heavenly Father, the Lord willing we endure until the end. Because as our Lord said, he that endured until the end. Right? And the word endure means made hard, made hard from everything that comes your way. The same shall be saved. Yeah. Second Peter 2, 2 and uh, 6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after shall live ungodly, and delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. And we are absolutely vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. We already hear the filthy conversation of the wicked just based on the songs that we hear. Look at what Jake talks about. Not only in music, but just when you're walking by and the, the, the shit that comes out their mouth. They're like, damn, man. Plotting on one another. It's all deaf and dumb. That's it. That's all it is. That's all... And, and if you really think about it, Esau Edom wants these so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, two-thirds of you to be just like him. The same nigga that he was during the time of Cain and Abel, right? Where he already lied to the Heavenly Father when he was asked, when he was asked, where's your brother? And he was like, I don't know. That same liar, that same murderer, you have become that way. That's why it is emphasized in the book of John, St. John 8 and 44, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, you. Proverbs 12 and 26, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduce, seduces them. Yeah, well, I mean, look at the wicked behavior. The way of the, the wicked behavior of, of, of Jake 
it, it entices other jinns, right? If you're if you're not, um, you know, rooted in this truth, if you're not, you, if you don't believe in this, if you don't believe in this truth, you're gonna be easily enticed, easily gravitated to the ways of darkness, and it's only gonna lead to your demise. Rightfully so. Because when we say two thirds of our people gotta go, they just gotta go. They have to go. They must go. And you got and you'll have Jake say, but why you gotta say that? Look at the fucking behavior of Jake. His foul is wicked. It's ignorant. And and if you look at the word ignorant, it literally means lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, lack of anything. So Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. Uh, three? Uh, yeah. Uh, verse 3 says, The ox and the owner, and his ass, and the ass is master's spirit, but Israel does not know who the Two of the most stubborn animals that absolutely know who their master is. But our people have went. And, and have went after other masters. Buddha, uh, Jesucristo, right? These saints with beads on them, right? Everything uh, became Muslim, uh, seventh day event, whatever. Everything but the heavenly father and his only begotten son to, to truly worship him and, and, and bow down to him. Our people, have completely gone all the way backward, and I believe that's the same chapter that it says that, right? Our simple and uh, wicked nation. Uh, verse four says, "Our sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity." Yes, yes, yes. Our people are laden with iniquity. You know, they have gone all the way backward. I mean, just look at them. You know, you tell, you tell a Jake. Listen, man, you're, you're, you're not black, you're not Puerto Rican, you're not Hispanic, you're none of that. You're an Israelite. Nah, I don't want to hear that. Guess what? Your oppressor calls you that, though. And they're going to walk away from that. Colonizers. Colonizers. You know, you got people that are calling themselves two continents. Right. No, the people doesn't. Two continents. African named after Leo Sipius Africanus, and American, after Amadigo Vespucci. So this is what you call yourself. African American, or I'm American, or I'm Hispanic, right? I'm Puerto Rican, right? No, you're not that. Cristobal Colon called you that. Right? The ones that oppressed you called you that. Right? And if you notice, the term has changed changed over the years. Because I, would, I believe it was a uh, colored Negro, then it became uh, black or an, an African American. I, I probably got the, the mixture of the order, but that's well, how it went. Didn't Jesse Jackson come up with that African American bullshit? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Same one that told that told one the kid to come out there on that bathroom. Oh, he told him. He was dead. Oh, he was dead. If you can get me where it says uh, a vibrant father, because that that's the that's the name you you so glorify. How how can we prove you glorify it? I mean, look at the parade you hold up. You know? You glorify these names. Labor Day Parade, Puerto Rican Day Parade, Spanish Heritage. All of that. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 37. Thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. Yeah. Among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Yeah, and guess what? When you read the book of uh, Psalms, the 8th, 3rd chapter, it says that they have conspired, meaning to come together, 
so that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. They literally wanted to destroy what your true nationality is. That should automatically tell you something. You come across verses like that, and it should really make you think, like, wait a minute. They conspired to, to, to get rid of us? Yes, they did. And they gave you certain terms to go by. in a very deep, low state that you're in. Because, because let's face it, the children of Israel being a special in the sight of the Heavenly Father are, are looked at as, as the scum of the earth. When really, in the kingdom, we're gonna look at these other nations as the scum of the earth. We're gonna be above them. They're gonna be subjected we onto us. We look at them like that right now. Exactly. Like when they got that proud look, yeah. I'm looking at you like, yo, your kingdom is <laughs> your kingdom is is, is crap. Yeah. And I know y'all conspired against us. Yeah. I know you didn't do it on your own, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's right. the point. And so I was telling uh, uh, Psalm um, that was it? Psalm one thirty seven and seven. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O oh, daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed, happy shall he be that reward thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that take it and dash it, thy little ones against the stone. And we're going to be doing that in the kingdom. Right from the soul. This is what we're, going to, this is what we're looking forward to. Right? But they wanted to literally get rid of our very existence of a people, right? The people that were very near unto the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, right? Now, the behavior of Jake during the time of Moses was very stubborn, very rebellious, despite the miraculous, um, the miraculous thing that the Heavenly Father did, putting his spirit on Moses, Part the Red Sea and delivering us from the from the hands of the Egyptians, right? Which should be an astonishment beyond. Even then, even then, they were still ungrateful. What did they want? A golden calf. All because Moses was doing what he had to do, so that he could come back and tell the children of Israel, "Look, this is the, the heavenly Father's name." You must call upon this thing. Right? They were, they were threatening Aaron to build a golden, a golden calf. Right? You fast forward it to today, our people don't have no type of hope besides worshiping wood and stone in their very houses. Right? Bowing down to this devil, Jesus Christ. Right? having these beads on their neck thinking that there's going to deliver you dead saints right when you're clearly breaking the first commandment which says don't put no other god before the heavenly father and don't put no graven images and that's the first thing you do and this is why the children of israel have become disobedient to this very day and i say the children of israel because that's your true nationality. You're not black, Hispanic, or Native American. You're the children of Israel. Israelites. Princes of the living power. Which is what Israel is in Hebrew. What it means in Hebrew. Yah, Shar, Allah. That's a, if, if, if you're called the prince of the living, of the living power, you're going to hold it like, dearly, like, wow, I'm a prince. The living power. You're going to really hold it tight. But no. You want to be called with your oppressive culture. They use their hand as a credible source. Yeah. Yeah. Because of his position, his status. His temporary status that the Most High gave him. Temporary. Very good. Or that the, Lord, the, the Most High sanctioned it. The Lord gave him, which is Isaac. 
Joe gave him his blessing. He saw his blessing. I got something. I know we do switch against, but it's still Jeremiah 15 and 5. For who shall have pity? For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? For who shall bemoan thee? Or who shall go aside to ask how thou doest? Remember you said these out of the before the scripture, these nations are illegal with each other. So if they conspired against us, then who the hell who the hell gonna inquire or have pity or have sorrow for us or complain of our condition? For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? Or who shall bemoan thee? Or who shall go aside to ask how thou doest? No world court, no UN, no reparations. You don't want that inflated shit anyway. Um, I got it. Yeah, and, and if you, there's another piece of that. I believe it says um, that we became a taunt and, and a shaking of the head. You get it. And that right there also proves that, you know, these other nations know how special we are. But because they are lords over us, this is the, that's really how they're moving. They're moving like, man, it's a damn shame how you become. We got a lot of our people sagging their pants down. I mean, really gone, man. Like, they become homosexuals, man. Like, just real low degenerate bastards, man. Because I say bastards because you don't know who your father is. That's right. You don't know who your father is. So, Lamentation chapter 2, verse 15, it says, All that clap, that, that pass by, clap their hands. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. hiss and whack their head at the daughter of Jerusalem. Read it again. Let's say chapter 2, verse 15. All that cla- pass by, clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem. Yeah, that's how they, that's how they look at us, man. You know? But, um, I believe it's um, second Isaiah the sixth chapter that tells you, um, I think it tells you that the Heavenly Father looks at the other nations as less than nothing, but be like on the spirit. You know? So, really, that's how we look at them right now. Like, like, the, like the beloved brother said, it's true. Yeah, we look at them like that. Because I know I get pissed when I see these, uh, <laughs> these other nations, man. Like, I'm like, damn, man, these people are really moving over. those? It's crazy. It makes you want to strive for the truth that much more. Because of that. Just seeing the fact that they're like, proud, they're proud as all hell. When you look at these other nations, they're proud as all hell. They literally look at us like, you're nothing. You know, especially Esau Edom. As a matter of fact, if you can get um, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, I believe, is towards the end. That's why, that's why they see this, when they see brothers, like let's say for instance, we not preaching a word. We are our after camp, but we go somewhere. We order a food, and they, they see us conversing or whatever. They get intrigued. Yeah. Like, oh, I thought they, I thought they was a bunch of you, 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 you uh, idiots or uh, uh, uneducated. Yeah. Well, if that's a word. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they start to look. If you just pay attention, you still look like. You know? Yeah. What you want to go I believe it's. Uh, is it 12 and, uh, uh, trust the enemy? Uh, yeah, it's a little door. It says, um, the enemy speaking sweetly to his lips. Yeah. Sirach chapter 12, verse 16. An enemy speaking sweetly with his lips, but in his heart, he imagine how to throw thee you go. into a pit. That's the point. And that's exactly how these devils move, man. How can we, what trends can we come up with to really get them to, to gravitate to it? What latest fashion designs can we get to, to where we know they're gonna give in to it? What, what can we do to make them more dumber than they become? 
you know? And say, wow, I really like that. And then just go behind your back and laugh. Yeah. That's how these devils move, man. It says, but in his heart, he imagined how to throw thee into a pit. He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. That's right, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe the word sister means pit. Right? Yeah. So, basically, this whole system that Esau Edom has uh, orchestrated has kept us in a pit. Right? And this is what they've always plotted. Our people on our own hands, but he's, he's thinking about crushing on all levels. On all levels. Whether what a genocide, economic, yes. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, y'all want to just be accepted. Oh, what, 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 we only worry about how Bashim Yahushua's acceptance. We yeah. don't want your fucking accept, accept, acceptance. Yeah. We're above you. That's right. You know what I mean? We don't want your acceptance. You got the world going to hold hands with these motherfuckers. Listen, man, we on clock can't move when right. we in the world, man. We, we, we might smile, might even hold a door for you. Right. We just, we just, uh, we just doing recon and moving under the radar. Well, we'll say to ourselves, until the tables turn. <laughs> because we can't wait for that. When the tables turn, oh man. When you see us standing right in front of you, we know for a fact we ain't gonna be outside. When we standing right in front of you, and we're looking down at you, knowing that we can literally crush you with our hands, oh man, it's over. And all the bricks that you're gonna have to carry. Oh, listen, what did the scripture say? That we're gonna give you double. Yeah. We're going to give you double everything that you've ever done to us. Just look at the movie on Goodbye After Time. They're, they're proud ways of how they were towards the so-called Negroes and Native Americans. Right? You've seen that. You've seen the way they were just proudly behaving. Right? That's how they got you. Uh, uh, Second Thessalonians 1 and 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High mm. to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. That's it, man. And that's, that's, the scriptures speak about meditating terror, right? Yeah. I believe it says that, right? Yeah. We meditate terror, so we, we, man, I get creative. I know brothers get creative. We get hella creative, right? So we know that the things that we're going to do in the kingdom, this is why we're going to literally live in the kingdom. We're not living here. This is not living. This is not living. This is surviving. You wake up oppressed, go to sleep feeling oppressed. Yeah. You know? Your alarm goes off, there goes the beginning of the oppression. Then you, you go through the day dealing with all kinds of bullshit. And then before you go to sleep, you ain't getting no type of rest. Drug use is forbidden in the kingdom, so you ain't gonna have nothing to block those pain receptors. That's a good thing. That's, that's our Lord. That's an abomination. And then you're not gonna even be able to use a regular herb that can have an effect like that. Yeah, so you just, bird. yo, you, you just gonna be, the best thing you might have is to put some water on that shit. You ain't gonna have water. Damn, homie. You, you, you know what's heavy in too? Babylon, you was man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's heavy though? Sure. You know how our Lord read right, minds? Yeah, we're gonna be doing that too. Oh, yeah. Whatever they think, we gonna be like, yeah. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> no more feet. That was that. No more feet, man. They gonna death for it. It's gonna end up again like like it was World War One. Death flat from them. Half faces going, half their faces blown off. Motherfuckers is hoping to die and they couldn't die. And they suffer like that. You know? Yeah, yeah that's what's coming. Yeah, yeah it's good to say they seek death with their body. Woo! It's gonna come again. There ain't gonna be no alcohol, there ain't gonna be no drugs, right. ain't gonna be no medication. Nothing. Yeah, World War One. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Revelation 
but that was biologically forfeited. They showed you that they was on Tyrone. They oh, gave yeah. you yeah. chicken spots. Making me want to watch it again. They gave you the food for Trojan horse. Trojan horse. Even though that's a myth, that story isn't real, but he he used that. the ideology. He used the formula. We wear Greeks bearing gifts. Here you go. So they gave us chicken spots. They gave us soda. Yeah. 50 cent sodas. They gave us Michael Dorn. They gave us joy. Arizona. Get rich or die trying, which is the dumbest name, title for an album. Why not gotta die to get rich? <laughs> so it's either I make money or die. Right, right. That's not the point of life for living. Just to make money. More, there's more aspects of life than making money. Uh, and now but, they want to get rid of the buyer. Okay, yeah, that's because look, you can have money, right? Let's say for instance, right? You can go chase the bag and have all of that bread, right? But here's the thing, that only that, that you, you only enjoy that when you have good health. Yeah. But with this truth, let's say something happened to me, right? I can't walk no more. I know that the kingdom is, is after that. Right. I know that this is a temporary purgatory, right? Yeah, but if I don't have this truth, that money is all I had, and without that health. I can't enjoy it. You it's get what I'm saying? It's all temporary. It's a trade-off. It's all temporary. Yeah. And guess what? The Lord can heal us. Yeah. You know? The Lord can uh, give you spirit to deal with your infirmities. Yeah. To deal with your loss and suffering. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You can raise a man out of poverty. Yeah. Oh, give us the spirit to deal with us. There you go. Oh, oh, give us the spirit. Well, give us the spirit to deal with our suffering, man. That's that's good too. Like to have us where we could deal with, with 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 our low finances or whatever, and have us manage it. And no other people would have survived slavery if it wasn't for the Lord. We wouldn't have survived slavery if it wasn't for the Lord. It's true. Esau was literally trying to exterminate the tribes, like wipe them off the face of the earth. Yeah. Right. Because thou hast not hated his blood, blood shall pursue thee. So that's what's, that's the ultimate end for Esau. He lived by the spirit, he's going to die by the spirit. Right. He put us in slavery, he's going into slavery. That's right. He that leadeth into captivity, captivity shall go into captivity. captivity. He that liveth by the spirit shall die, die by the spirit. He is the patience and the faith of the saints. That's what we patiently make it for. That's right. We want to exterminate us. We want to exterminate us. We really try to do away with it. Our whole 12 tribe, man. We wipe them off the face of the earth, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. This. He did it. He did it. I, I, I'm going to say it with this. With the, with the AIDS. Biological. Yeah, biological The AIDS virus, man. People's going to get them back sick. The back sick for the AIDS. Oh, all right. I can't even say it for that. Oh, that's fuck yo, Esau, you the damn devil, man. That's right. <laughs> yo, you can't even, I can't even talk about all the shit y'all did. You know what I mean? Allegedly. Yeah. Goddamn devils. Devils. <laughs> you know, but we gonna wrap it up, bro. So with that, we want to give all the praises, the honor, and the much-deserved glory to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahushai, Hashem, I don't want to write this out until next time. Kwam Yasha'Allah wa Ababa Ba. Kwam Yasha'Allah wa Ababa Ba. Stop. Can't see it. Oh. It's a lot. Yeah.